let me see if I can. Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah, settings. General. Okay. Hold on. I love the background. Yeah. <laughs> it's very cool. You good? Uh, yeah, I just wanted to just change my name. There we go. Let's go. Yeah. It's, uh... Linda. All right, ladies and gentlemen, you're listening to the We Be Free radio show, Brain Food from the Heartland. I absolutely love this book. And I think I've built some biceps by just carrying it around. Sometimes, you know, <laughs> seriously. And with the biggest, I, 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 it's a terrible thing. People hate to see me do it, but sometimes I, I like, to, I pace and read. I just, I get excited. And I, this book is probably the exception because it would throw me off balance. It's massive. And I absolutely, and the photography is incredible. Uh, so let's, let's talk a little bit about you and your background, night sky guy. Yeah, well, um, that was actually coined by a, a radio host uh, that I appeared on like over 20 years ago. Um, and I thanking him, Peter Anthony Holder out of Canada. Um, and uh, I've been basically a amateur astronomer my entire life, um, over four decades of watching the skies. I thank my dad for introducing me at oh my gosh I was a toddler and he took me out on the rooftop we lived downtown Montreal Canada pretty large city lived in a in a big apartment complex would take me up to the rooftop and with his little department store telescope show me some amazing sights like uh, Jupiter and its moons Saturn's and its rings touring the moon this was just after the Apollo missions you know and yeah. so it's just like, it's been a lifelong thing. I've traveled the world looking from dark skies uh, at, uh, you know, from Southern hemisphere, Northern hemisphere, and just being enthralled my entire life. And I've just been so blessed to be able to convert my passion into, uh, into a career where I communicate my passion to, to people and get people jazzed up about looking up at the night sky and that connection that we all have with the, that, that, that we share with the same night sky up there. That's, I love that story about your dad. That's, that's absolutely, absolutely wonderful. Again, folks, the book is Stargazers Atlas, the ultimate guide to the night sky. My guest is Andrew Vazegas. And one of the things, he, folks, as you know, it's a National Geographic book, so you know it's beautiful. And the photography, again, the photography just blows my mind. Andrew, it just blows my mind. It is. Well, it's National Geo. You know, they are like Geo, fantastic. Yeah. The, the team there of being able to, you know, research and find the best of the best that represents it. And I was really fortunate to also have a voice in that and sh in sharing my ideas of how do we represent some of the concepts that we we put forward there? You know, um, it's it's really an an amazing team there um, at at Nat Geo, and uh, unlike anything I think it exists in the world, uh, and the resources that that exist there of being able to mine, you know, all these different databases of images that are coming through, it's it's quite it's like a fire hose of information, really. Yeah, and again, they do a great. I, I always say this about the Nat Geo books: the photography is fantastic, the way they put it together is fantastic. I want to. I know we've got limited time. I, I just, I just have to tell you that when I started to, when I opened the book, started to read it, it reminded me of. I'll tell you how long ago it was. We had a, a, a tube, t, TV in the bedroom, and we used to watch. Uh, Jack Horkheimer would always say, "Keep, Keep looking, looking up." up. up. <laughs> yeah, and when he, yeah, it just absolutely it made me think of that because, again, who isn't uh, fascinated by the the night sky? I don't oh, know exactly. And Jack Horkheimer was amazing. That enthusiasm just came yeah. across the TV set, didn't it? it? Into into your room, and it just got you all excited to going up. As did, for instance, for me too, Carl Sagan. 
back in the early 80s, right, on PBS when that Cosmos TV yes, series yes. launched. Just fantastic stuff. And I was just a little tyke. I was like, I think I was like 10 years old at the time. And I, I remember turning off my little TV set and I go, I couldn't believe what I was seeing. It's, there was some kind of connection that was being made, a cosmic connection, literally. And I think that happened to millions of people around the world. And we're so fortunate, you know, to live in an epoch now where we have, you know, we have all this digital technology and everything. And I know there's downsides to it, but the positives is that we're connected to things that discoveries unlike ever before. We, we can see NASA missions unfold in real time. NASA gives us practically the images from their spacecrafts almost in real time. We saw that. For just a great instance of that is that asteroid that we smashed in DART, the DART mission, yeah, yeah. just the other week. We saw that unfold live, live thanks to yeah. the cameras there Amazing. and NASA just sharing that. And the great observatories like the James Webb Space Telescope, we're seeing those come out live. And as we've done with the Hubble and everything. And this book has a lot of those amazing discovery images in context with you know, the science that's there. And also, how can you connect to yeah. these objects? You know, it's an atlas at heart that this book is a traditional atlas. And, you know, it, it shows you the maps of these worlds, you know, like um, uh, uh, Jupiter uh, and its main moons, the Galilean moons, that you can pick up a pair of binoculars and actually look up with those pair of binoculars and see those little moons. Uh, dots uh, right beside the planet. You can actually connect them, the same ones that the Voyager spacecraft, the Galileo spacecraft, went by and, and snapped amazing close-up images. Well, those are included in this atlas. So you've got this connection where you can go out under the night sky, see these kind of objects, and then get to get to understand and appreciate some of the, um, you know, the science behind it, not in a, you don't have to be a, a, an astronomer or, 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 you know, a rocket scientist to enjoy this. It's just the, the curiosity, that natural thing that we all have as humans in our DNA is that curiosity is all you need. And a good, good book to go with it, that a guide, an right? Amazing book. An amazing, amazing book, an amazing, amazing book available everywhere and everywhere online. As I always say, please try to buy it as close to home as possible. There's lots of options at the link we put up. But Stargazer's Atlas, the ultimate guide to the night sky. And I am delighted to have night sky guy, Andrew Vizekas on talking about his book. When you, again, you, you, the, I love the chapters. Oh, I've got to mention this. I'm sorry. I'm all over the place, uh, Andrew. I, I love when you write in the early part of the book that if the average distance of a star that we see at night or something we see in the sky at night is 75 light years away 75 years that light has been traveling i probably read that over i'm gonna be more, five times probably more to try to grasp that exactly that's it it's that appreciation that's exactly what you what you're saying and 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 because you know it's Everything in space is everything when you look up in the night sky is at a, at a great distance. It boggles the mind. It's, it's hard to wrap around uh, that concept. And, you know, astronomers have come up with, you know, uh, light, the term light year, the distance that light travels in one year. You know, and that's about, you know, uh, seven trillion miles. And uh, um, and instead of, you know, using these gigantic terms that we use, you know, miles, uh, it, trillions of miles, I mean, it's it just it, it's just not a useful way of describing things. You, we need to have a new term. And that's why light years is being used when we're talking about objects in, in deep space. And the best way for for, I think, all of us little earthlings up there, the average, if we're not like Stephen Hawking or, you know, Neil deGrasse Tyson to understand it is like, you know, the light left on, you know, on its journey from some of these objects, you know, that, uh, you know, a, a century ago or a millennia ago or literally millions of years ago. You know, when the dinosaurs roamed some of these galaxies that we're seeing today, that's when the light left on its journey. And it's taken that long to travel through space. You know, it's, you know, the, a, a, a particle of light travels at 180,000 miles per second. 
It's incredible. And oh, yet, at, even at those speeds, it takes years for it to travel through space to reach us, that beam of light. And that's just kind of, you got to just sit back and take it easy, take a deep breath and kind of go, okay, uh, that's cr that's crazy stuff. But it, then, you, then the sense of awe comes in, right? It's that awe. Uh, sense that's so important, I think. And and especially in today's world, you know, if I take a big picture beyond astronomy, we live in a very hectic world, a lot of chaotic events going on. And today we have to admit the pandemic, there are wars, there's all financial. And, you know, to take a few moments and look up at the night sky and take in that awe and wonder, it's good for the soul. You know, I, it does, I love right? that. It's good for the soul. Oh, I, I agree. It's good for the soul. And I love how you said that, Andrew Vegas. Uh, you, so many things in the book. Again, the sky maps that you have. And again, it's a big book. The, the pictures are big. You can see it. Old people like me don't have to get out the magnifying glass and try to figure out what was it there. Was it there. I'm serious. I mean, it's, it is it is just absolutely so beautiful. And then you talk about all of the, uh, uh, all of the different ways to look and how to see and connect connect things like the uh the zodiac uh the different animals the different things that are there and there are so many more than i thought not just the zodiac but there are so many more than you would think because most people think the zodiac there's what 12 and then you see all these and they're it's amazing yeah, and those zodiacal constellations, there's 12 of them, but really there's actually 88 constellations across the entire night sky that is visible from both northern and southern hemisphere. And by the way, that's one of the things that as a as an sky observer, an aficionado, uh, you know, I made sure that our my friends in the southern hemisphere get their fair shake. A lot of times these kind that's of right. atlases and guides mm -hmm just That's a very north north uh, northern hemisphere centric and so i wanted to make sure that they get full coverage there's equal coverage so you could be literally anywhere in the world pick up this book and really uh brush up on any of the 88 constellations minor ones major ones uh and some of the what i like to call deep sky treasures so these are objects beyond the solar system things like star clusters uh gas clouds that are so colorful uh you know and and get other galaxies these islands of stars scattered across yes. the universe there's literally hundreds and hundreds of them that I've covered. Uh, and many of them are famous. Some you've probably never heard of uh, that are just tucked away somewhere in a corner of the sky. But you can and find this guide them. helps the, you to find them. You can find them in a book, <laughs> Stargazer's Atlas, The Ultimate Guide to the Night Sky. Andrew Fizekas, I've got to tell you, this is like what your dad did for for all, what your dad did for you, this is for you've done for all of us because we'll all be inspired by it. I love the book, folks. Get the book. If you're a parent, get the book and go through it with your child or children because then you may, who knows, you may have, a, if you don't mind if I say Andrew Fizekas in your, in your family. I just, I want to tell you, and I know you got to split. Thank you so much. Your personality is fantastic for this. Oh, um, thank you so much for the for the opportunity. And I hope we've converted some folks to spend a few moments to look up at the night sky. Absolutely. And Zekas, <laughs> again, folks, I, I would I suggest that you get the book. I suggest you get the book because of the